Welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss a very popular problem called the Tower of Hanoi. So it consists of three pegs. In our picture below, we have peg one, two, and three. Now on peg A, there are n disks. The disks have different diameters, and they are arranged in decreasing size from the bottom to the top. So the bottom has the biggest disk, and then smaller and smaller and smaller all the way up to the top. So the objective of this puzzle is to transfer all of the disks from peg A to peg B. But you can't just pick them all up from A and plop them onto B. There is a rule for moving the disks. So only one disk can be moved at a time. And when you move the one disk, it can only be placed on the pegs. You can't put it off to the side. And then finally, you can't put a bigger disc on top of a smaller disc. So the discs always have to be in their natural order. You can think of like the discs on the bottom are too heavy and they would crush the ones on the top if they were ever placed on top. But they're big enough that they can support the, the weight of the other ones. So give this problem a try. If you're writing on a piece of paper, you may want to just write down the numbers, like the biggest disk is three, and then the next, second one is two, and then one. And in this sense, you can't put a you know, bigger number on top of a smaller number. If you solve it with three, try it with four. So let's give this a try. We could move one to a new location and then move two to a new location, and then we could put one on top of two. Now we can't move three at this point because there's nowhere to put it. We can put the one there. And now we've set up a situation where we are finally allowed to move the number three. So we can move three there, and then we need to put the one and the two on top of it. So we'll take the one and put it there. We'll stick the two on top and then the one on top. Finally to finish the job. So we've placed the tower now on the middle peg. So let's try to do this with four. If you haven't already, try it again with that solution that we just did in mind with three. Okay, so let's solve the problem with four disks. Now we're gonna use the solution that we just did with three disks to help us out. We found a way to move one, two, and three with a sequence of moves so we'll use that same sequence to move one, two, and three again. And now we are allowed to move four. It's really the only way that you can move four is if you have everything else shoved to another place. So we'll move four to the middle place, and then we'll move one, two, three on top. So essentially, we've used the previous solution twice to help us out to get the solution for one, two, three, four disks. This is what we call thinking recursively or thinking inductively. So we're gonna use this idea to set up a recurrence relation to solve our puzzle. So let's make ourselves some space and think about how this works in general. So let's say we have a tower of n disks and that it takes a minimum of a sub n minus one moves to move a tower of n minus one disks. So let's count the number of moves it will take to move n disks. So let's say we'll just draw down on our page, let's say that this is our, our biggest disk right here. And then on top of that disk, we have n more disks that are of course smaller in di diameter. So that's why I'm drawing a triangle on top. So we have n minus 1 disks from there all the way down there, and then the total would be n disks from the top all the way to the bottom. So if we wanted to move the tower that's sitting on top of that biggest disk, let's think about what that would cost us. So if we made that move and we move that tower somewhere, let's count the number of moves. So let's make a little column here on the right hand side where we'll count the number of moves that it takes. So that would cost us a sub n minus one 
moves. Okay, so after we make that sequence of moves, then that biggest disk would still be sitting right where it is. And the tower that we moved of size n minus 1 would be sitting over here. So now we can take that biggest disk and move it to a new place. So we'll just move it right in the middle. That would cost us one move. So after we do that, then of course the biggest disk is now shifted over to the right a little bit in the middle uh, territory or for, for peg B. And then our tower is still where it is. We didn't touch that. But now we're going to move the tower on top of that biggest disk. How many moves will that cost us? Well, again, it's a sub n minus 1 moves. So a sub n minus 1 uh, moves. And we should also take a moment that, to realize that as this completes the, the job, it puts the tower back together in a new position. This also does it in the fastest possible way, because the only way that you ever move this biggest disk is with this setup, with the tower containing every other disk somewhere else, and this biggest disk is now allowed to move. So if we move the tower in the fastest possible way, each time we, we move it, then all of these moves keep totaling to the fastest possible way. So that's why we say it takes a minimum of that amount, because we're going to constantly move it in the fastest possible way. So this builds us what we call a recurrence relation. So we can write down a sub n is equal to twice a sub n minus 1 plus 1. And the initial condition to go along with this, well, if you have one disk, of course, the fastest possible way to move it is just with one, one move. So this is my recurrence relation. We call a recurrence relation RR for, for short. So now we're going to solve our recurrence relation. And we're going to use the method of iteration. So a sub 2, that would equal the term that we had before, which is 1 multiplied by 2. So 2 times 1 plus 1. OK, now a sub 3. That would be everything we had before, multiplied by 2. So we'd have 2 to the power 2 plus 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 1 at the end. Now a sub 4. We take everything that we had on the previous step, and we multiply it by 2. So we get 2 to the power 3 plus 2 to the power 2 plus 2, and then we're supposed to add 1 to that. And at this stage, we can notice that we're getting powers of 2. So how about instead of adding 1, we'll add 2 to the power 0, and we can write 2 to the power 1, and we have, have a geometric series forming. So if we keep going all the way up to a sub n, at that stage, we would get 2 to the power of n minus 1 plus 2 to the power of n minus 2, all the way downhill, all the way down to 2 to the power 0. Now, in a previous video, we found a closed form for this. And to remind you of that formula, we took the largest power that's in the, the list in our geometric series, and we added 1 to that power, so 2 to the power n, then minus 1 over top of 2 minus 1, the base minus 1. And in this case, we just get 2 to the power n minus 1. Now, does this solution make sense? Well, if we think about it, if there is n different disks, so let's say we have 3 disks, we'd have 2 to the power 3, which is 8 minus 1, there should be 7. So if we scroll back up to where we were working before, the amount of moves that it takes for us to move these three disks, it should be seven. So how about we count them? So if we move the one, that's one, and two, and three, and four, five, 
6, and 7. So that's what we just solve for. So if you're curious, in the next example, if we were you know, looking back at you know, this one over here, this sh should result in 2 to the power of 4 minus 1 moves. There should be 15 of them. So when we did this, well, when we moved this stack, that's 7 moves all at once, so 7, and then plus 1 to move the 4, so that's 8, and then 7 more to stick that on top, so 8 plus 7, that's 15, or 2 to the power 4 minus 1. So that gives us our you know, solution to the Tower of Hanoi puzzle right here. It's a bit of story time, a little story for you to end up this video. So I went to the movie theater, The Date, a while back, and we were watching the Planet of the Apes movie. And during this movie, the apes are getting smarter and smarter, and they were solving the Tower of Hanoi puzzle. And the scientists are getting very worried that, oh, they're solving it very quickly. So I turned to my date and I said, do you think that they're using the recurrence relation solution? And my date just you know, frowns at me and is just left speechless, having no idea what I'm talking about. So if you're interested in checking out that clip from the movie, I'll put it in the YouTube comments below. Thanks so much for listening to the video. We'll see you on the next one.